say that we we are an organization. We have a hierarchy. We have a president. We have uh, vice presidents who are throughout the country. We have one from New Mexico. Steve is from New York. Pete is from Miami. Steve O'Brien is Northern Cal. And then we have our board of governors, which is basically our district made up of our district chairman. Most of the states in our country are run by a district chairman or a, a, a chairperson, I should say. But there's still a couple states that have more than one, but usually it's just one. But what I like about this slide is you see here, NPC members. That's all of you. That's the foundation of everything above it. And I can't stress this enough. I tell athletes all the time, you have so much power, it's just that you don't realize it. There's no organization, seriously, without our athletes. Okay. One of the things I get asked all the time are questions about, like, where, what contest should I do? How many pro cards are being given? What shows can I get a pro card from? And if you're a, you know, a, a U.S. citizen versus a non-U.S. citizen, where can you go to get your pro cards at? I'm telling you, if you go to the NPC website, there's all these little tabs at the top, and I'm telling you, there is so much information. I've actually started using it a whole lot more with my seminars. But you will see, there's a little tab that says rules at the top. There's schedules, because I, the more I travel, I see a lot of athletes that are traveling. And so athletes will go, I just was, I did, did the Emerald Cup last year, there were athletes from Florida that came up to the Emerald Cup, take their kids out of school, they do an educational thing, husband and wife compete, so they do this two or three times throughout the year. So if you go to schedules, there's a, and I'll show you later on, it'll tell you where every show in the country is on any date, and when you click on it, it will take you to the promoter's website so you can get the information. Okay? And there's a contest, so if you want to see like what the results are from a certain contest. And, but this search button to me is the most important because almost all the pros, a lot of our officials, they all post videos from everything like, you know, what they wish they would have known when they first, you know, started competing. And it just, it gives you a lot of information so that you don't make the same mistakes. It gives you tips on posing and nutrition and recipes. Um, and all you gotta do is just type in a search word up there and it'll bring all the videos up, uh, you know, that is related to that. Who in here is men's physique? Who's classic? Okay, when you get some time in the next couple of days, go to that search button and put in Steve Weinberger. He does two posing videos, quarter turns uh, for classic physique and the mandatories, and then men's physique, and I am telling you, if you know Steve, it's not a lot of fluff, it's like a two, three minute video, but I'm telling you, he gives you all these little nuances on how to pose, just things to bring out your physique to its best. I'm telling you, I, I watch him, I, I always tease, tease Steve and tell him that if he has a whole lot of hits on his videos, because I'm watching it, because I'm doing more and more seminars and, and, and talking to a lot of the, the male competitors. Okay, and next, like I said, if you go to rules, if you go to all these different tabs, it'll take you to whatever division you competed. But it will tell you everything from heist or weight classes, which shows, like, you know, which shows give pro cards, how many pro cards. Some shows only give a couple pro cards. Other ones do all class winners. Some do the top two. But it just tells you, like, what, and it gives you also a vague, just outline of what we're looking for in the different divisions. When I told, told you about schedule, you get a, the monthly thing, and you click on the wherever the dots are, it'll take you to that day, it'll tell you all the shows that are listed for that day, and it'll take you to the different websites of the promoters. Okay, this is the biggest thing. Why would you even be an NPC competitor? Okay, one, obviously, is competition. And if you've been around in the last six months, you know that we've expanded tremendously. We've always had international competitions, but not to the degree that we are now. So we have so many, last year, our IFBB, whether they're here or overseas, were like 32 or 38. Last count, we're at 118. That's not our NPC shows. That's just our IFBB shows here in the country and outside the country. So there's again, we had we just did a show in Columbia. We had I think seven or eight NPC members that went down just to compete in the Columbia show. Because again, it's a small world, and people want they want to have that ability to travel. The next one is our insurance, and this is the one that when you check into your shows that you get, everybody gets so particular about, because you have to be a member, because, you know, it doesn't happen often, but every once in a while, 
especially women with the heels and stuff. Somebody trips, somebody falls. We've had a fitness competitor break an ankle one time, and you have to be a member for the insurance, you know, the medical insurance to cover you for that. Next is the marketing and network. This is the part that I can't stress enough because, like I said, I've been involved in this sport for over 30 years, and I will tell you, I have seen so many athletes come into the sport and become very financially successful financially and they're not your Olympia winners. This organization will give you one of the largest abilities to network and market yourself in the in the world. It really will. And I've seen so many athletes find their niche with supplement companies, starting their own companies. I just had a one of the our national competitors from Arizona was just telling me last week that she her and her husband started a uh, food prep company last year and they already have 13 people working for them. So it gives you that ability, but it's what you do with it. Nobody's going to come to your door. It's people that are actually going out and they'll market themselves. And then the next one is friendships. And I think this is why the teams, our teams have grown so much. Because when you first, you know, 20, 30 years ago, you were like this. When you competed, you were like this lone island. You waited for magazines to come out with information. Sometimes it was three months later, or you called a Gold's gym to find out what were the results from the contest. But you were kind of by yourself, okay? Maybe, you know, like I said, just some people in your gym and stuff. But now with the teams, um, it's, the support is unbelievable. Like, I, and I say this all the time, because you'll have girls that are mothers, they're getting up at 3, 4 in the morning to do their cardio, do their training before they get the kids ready for school, before they get off. And sometimes you just kind of go like, oh, I can't get up, to, you know, like, one more day, I can't do this. And then somebody texts you from your team, and they're from another state, I'm up doing cardio. Are you on the machine yet? Okay, I'm, I'm out of here. So I just think the, the friendships is one of the reasons that the teams, because again, it's another networking, it's a support group, and it helps you get through those times when you're at a plateau and you need something just to get you over it. Okay, I'm going to kind of go through this, I'm kind of going to go through is just scoring. All I want to point out is that all judges get is, and this is, I don't care whether you're at the Olympia or you're at the show tomorrow. All judges get is a strip of paper, usually it has more than four people on it, but it's a contested number and we put our placement. No names, no who you're, where you're from, nothing else is on it, okay? One thing that we do all do in the NPC is we always do odd number of judges. Most of the time it's seven, it can be as small as five sometimes, but at the, at the nationals it's 11 judges and at the Olympia it's 13 judges because often I hear athletes say, oh, that judge, every time I compete, he doesn't like my physique, he always puts me down. What I'm trying to show is here is we always knock out one high, one low. So one judge cannot do anything to an athlete. And when you get to the bigger shows, where you're, like I said, where you're using 9, 11, or 13, we're still knocking out the majority of the judges that you end up with five. So when you're doing 13 judges at the Olympia, we're knocking out, uh, what is it, five highs, five lows. To end up four highs and four lows to get that number five. So there's four judges with high scores that are getting crossed out. So it, it truly is, the scoring is truly is based on the majority of the panel, not one or two judges, no matter what show you're at. This one comes up a lot about breaking ties. And again, one of the that's one of the reasons we do use an odd number of judges, because if you have two athletes and they both have the same score. We, don't, we forget about the highs and the lows, and we just look at how each judge placed the athletes. If you look, that first athlete, four judges thought this athlete was better than this one, because you go one to five, three to four, one to two, two to three. So the one, four out of seven is the majority. That athlete becomes second, and that becomes third. That's how we do it, whether you're in, in, a, in a different class, or if we do the overalls and there's a tie, in the, and you'll see it sometimes on the IFBB papers, because I always do it on my forms if when I send them in. I'll put on the bottom, all ties broken by relative placing. Okay. And two, to take the majority of what the judges want to see. If you look down sometimes, and because athletes will say to me, oh, I saw the judges talking. Well, they're passing down, lots of times they're passing down what they're, they want to see in that first call out. And seriously, you can look on Steve's paper, my paper, we do Roman numerals next to the athletes numbers and the numbers with the highest amount of judges that want to see them, that's who we call out. Now lots of times if I think we missed somebody in the women, I'll pull her out, you know, or I think that somebody's not as good as the rest of the quality, I might keep that athlete out there. But it's what the panel wants. It's not what one person wants. Okay. 
This doesn't matter what division you are in, from bikini to bodybuilding. We are, I mean, we're a physique organization, so it's always muscularity, okay? But it, what the difference is, is just the degree of muscularity. It's, each one is a little bit more than the one before. Symmetry, shape, and balance. I, this, again, I can't stress enough. And I think, again, because our sport has grown so much, and the quality in men's physique, bikini, classic, is becoming so, it's so intense, that it, I mean, all these things, just a little separation, a little degree separates one athlete from the other. And presentation. This is another part that, again, I can't stress enough. 20 years ago, bodybuilders just went through the routines, and it was kind of like just, you know, entertainment for the audience, for their friends and family, and it didn't play that much of a part in the judging. The, the, the athlete, there was a big difference between a lot of the qualities of athletes up there. But now, like I said, if you go, if you look at the, the picture on um, the photos from like the Olympia men's physique, you had guys, athletes placing in 10th and 12th place that had won multiple regional shows. So presentation and how you pose, because again, not so much like a show here, like the regional shows, because especially in the novice classes and in the, the true novice classes, judges were forgiving. You know, if we can see that you're just not posing right, we're going to give you a little bit. But as you move up the ranks and you get to those, the national shows and you get to the pro shows, there's no forgiving. Judges are only going to judge what they can see. And so this really, seriously, plays a big part. And I think sometimes athletes, especially when they're first starting out, they spend so much time in the gym and so much time with their nutrition, but especially if it gets close to the show, they don't take the time to do the presentation. Or you go to the websites and you watch different pros and you're like, oh, I like the way that person poses. So you kind of emulate it, which is okay, as long as it fits your physique and it fits your personality. So you have to remember that because, um, you know, with bikini, Amanda Latona could get up there and was very flamboyant, and but she pulled it off. It just fit her. If you Ashley Caldwell was somebody totally different, she was a, more of a matter of fact person. But obviously, it both worked for them. I can't, could never imagine Ashley trying to pose with that same energy level that Amanda. She wouldn't have pulled it off. It just wouldn't have looked. It would have looked awkward. So when you're looking at you're going to the NPC website, you're pulling up different pros and you're kind of watching their routines now and stuff. Kind of keep that. You want to pick one that you feel comfortable with and you think fits your, you know, your physique. Because everyone has better body, you know, better uh, body parts that are, you know, uh, angles of their physique than somebody else does. So if you don't have a really great upper chest, you're not going to pick a lot of somebody that has a really great upper chest and he highlights a lot of his movements and how he angles so that it brings that out. Okay. Overall look, hair, makeup, suit, again. The higher up you go in the shows, the more, it's seriously, the more important. Um, and I don't mean to diss any suit makers, but if, if you have a suit that fits your body, I always tell people you want to wear it until it falls off, okay? You don't need a new suit every time you get on stage. Hair and makeup, though, especially for first-time competitors, you have no idea what those lights do to your, you know, with the makeup and how they wash you out and stuff. I would, this, I would actually say you will always want, it's like in the beginning, you want somebody to do your hair and makeup just so that you get an idea of how much is enough, you know, to make you stand out otherwise without being too much. And again, after a couple years, a lot of the, some of the pros will say to me, they do their own, or a lot of them just say, hey, they love being pampered when it gets closer to the show, so they keep letting somebody else do it. But I really think in the beginning, it's really worth your while to spend that money for the, the especially for the makeup. Um, because like I said, it can really, you know, it's really hard to, to do it so it's, you know, it looks good under the lights when you're not used to that. Okay? Pre-judging, again, no matter what division, there's always a group lineup, there's always individual poses, and then comparisons. These two sometimes switch. Depending on the size of the show, we might have the, you might come out and do your individual first, um, or you might come out in the group lineup. Usually at the bigger shows, and we started doing it at our nationals, if you're there, you're going to come out in the lineup first. Because if there's, well, last year we had 56 guys in one of our men's physique classes. As a judge, I love seeing that whole 56 athletes so that I know the quality that's in that class so that when you come out for your individuals, I kind of have an idea of, okay, where you're going to fit in. So for me, I just, I mean, I do it both ways, but I like when we do the, the group lineup first and then the individuals. But these three, uh, these three are always, no matter what, you know, where you go to, uh, to compete in the NPC. And then finals, again, 
if it's close between two athletes and it's happened at our nationals, it's happened at our Olympia, and it's like one or two points different at night, we'll actually do a second round of judging. If you know if one athlete comes back a little bit tighter, somebody comes back posing a little bit or you know presenting themselves a little bit better. So you can't once pre-judging is over, even though most of the judging is done, it can always you can always have a second round at night. Um, so you just really want you know you've done all that work, you really want to keep yourself in shape, you know, at your best till after the finals are over. Okay, Miss Francesca was nice enough to let me use this because sometimes a lot of my judges have a hard time telling women that it's like their physiques are okay, but they get washed out under the lights, or the hair and the makeup just kind of doesn't fit right and stuff, and it's hard to tell somebody, because then they, they, they always say to me, it's very difficult for guys. So I judge Francesca, now again, she was still doing a uh, figure here, but it's only like a, a month or two different, but I judged at the Emerald Cup, okay? And then somebody got a hold of her and changed her hair, her makeup, and stuff, and she did bikini. That's all, nothing to the body, that's all the changes that she made, but it made a big difference in how she presented herself on stage, the confidence she felt. So sometimes it's, it's you know, it's just little things like this that can really make a difference, especially, like I said, once you get up and you're competing at a national level where the quality of the athlete is, is so good. Another thing, and again, this, I have a bikini competitor up here, but, Lots of times I do, I get, because again, nothing, if, if you're going to change your physique, it's, you're not going to do it in a month. It is not going to happen. I have people all the time come up to me and I'll say that, you know, you need to add a little bit of muscle here, you need to do this, and I get, oh, good, I don't have another show for two months. You're not going to do it. It takes time. And then I have athletes that will email me and say, I've been competing for three years and I'm kind of not getting anywhere. Um, and this was one of them. This was at 15. This was in 16, this was in 17, pro part. It's not something that's going to happen overnight. It, it, this is a lifestyle. Um, I just had a, I did a seminar a couple months ago in San Antonio, Texas, and I had a master's competitor that um, stopped competing 16 years ago because he had a son, and that's where his priority was. And he said, but I didn't stop it. The lifestyle, I still trained, I did. and he came back to the master's nationals and got his pro part. So, you know, my big thing is, is like, it just takes time. This is a lifestyle. It's not something that you're going to do for six months or a year and then, you know, and then walk away from it. If it's really in your blood, it's, it becomes your lifestyle, whether you're actually on stage competing or you're not. Okay, bikini. What are judges looking for? Okay. If you, to me, if you're an athlete, this slide should be the best slide that you ever look at. Because if you look, you have someone that's a lot smaller, tall and leaner muscle, a little bit more muscular in the legs, a little bit more muscular over it, again, very thinner in the muscle, a little bit heavier in the bottom. All those different bodies first call on at the Olympia. That tells you we are not looking for a certain look. And that's what I tell athletes all the time. You, you need to take your body to its best level, and it doesn't matter who shows up. It's because it's, we're looking for that whole overall picture under the lights, okay? We're not looking for just a, a, certain, you know, a certain structure. Does that, does that make sense? Because that, to me, if, you know, otherwise, if I'm saying, well, you have to be wide shoulders, like, you know, in, old, in the bodybuilding world, you did. You had, you needed a big, big V-taper. Women, we're not born with V-tapers for the most part, okay? So this just, I love, that's why I love bikini so much, is because it's so many different types of bodies, and yet they can all, they take their body till, it, till it's best, and you can end up in the first call out, even though, like I said, all six of these bodies are totally different structures. Okay. This, I'm going to ask the people in the front here. What don't you see back here? Like. <laughs> <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. But, and again, this is, okay, this is the Olympic. What I find at the regional level, I see women coming in, dieted down to nothing. Okay, bikini, and then they'll say to me, well, I don't think I thought, they think there was muscle in bikini. Uh, hell yeah, there's muscle in bikini. There's muscle in every one of our divisions. You need that muscle, you need that foundation, okay, to give your body shape. Because I, I came from a cardiovascular background. I used to run all the time. I did a, 
you know, I did um, tri I mean, um, marathons and stuff, it just makes you a smaller version of your old self. The weight training and putting on muscle, which men have known for years, is, is the only thing that's actually going to change your shape. You can actually make your body, your upper body look like it's bigger than your lower body if you start it out like a pear. You can, but, it's, but you have to have that muscle underneath. So what I think happens is girls come in and they, we have, you know, in our mind it's always, you spend most of your life like, I want to stay small, I want to stay lean. And so they come in really lean and they're dieted down and you see, you know, splits in their hamstrings, but they're very thin muscle-wise. And I'm like, if I'm not asking for it in the Olympia, I'm certainly not, we're certainly not looking for that at the amateur level. I think it's just that, because again, it's so hard for women to gain muscle, and then what happens is, you do a show and you diet it down, and if you get too lean, you've already lost some of that great muscle that you worked so hard to do. I would rather, if you're really, if this is not just for A1 show, and some people will say to me, I just got up on stage once, I just wanted to give it a shot, okay? But that's all they're ever going to do. But if you're really going to be in here for the long haul, I, it's longevity, it would do you well to come in softer in the beginning, not while you're still trying to put that foundation on and trying to gain the muscle, then come in and diet it down so much just so that I can see some of that, and then you've lost some of that precious muscle while you're training. That's just my own opinion on that one. And does that make, I mean, does it, because like I said, I guess muscles, what's, and the thing is for women, muscles what's going to increase your metabolism and make life 10, 15 years ago, I mean 10, 10 years down the road, so much easier. I ate so much more now than I ever ate when I was in my 20s. You, you tried to make it to dinner, you ate like five, 600 calories, and then you went to bed. That's what we did. And we didn't eat protein because I could eat a lot of salad for the same calories that I could eat that half a chicken breast. And I, I nurse, and I will tell you, most of the nursing that I nurse who I work with in an adult ICU, we go on the soup diet. They come in because they always tell me all their new you know, the new fat diet, I'm hey, on this new soup diet, I already lost five pounds. And there's not a stitch of protein in that soup. And it's like they're eating it four times a day, and I'm like, in the 21st century, this should not be happening. Okay, real quick, what do you notice about these two competitors? No good mornings. Okay, both of them. I can't, and we're going to go through a little bit later on. I can't stress this enough. I'm serious. If you're doing bikini posing, to, you don't want to bend. What happens, and I've done this now enough at some of my shows that I've been judging at, even with my master's competitors. I'm old. I know where the bending came from, okay? And yes, will it tighten this? Absolutely. But the problem is, you have to remember, judges are sitting down here. We're looking up, okay? What it tends to do when you bend, it widens this, and then most of the girls bend and push back way too hard, so now it flattens, because it tightens, but it also flattens your glutes. So now you have wider, flatter glutes. I bet you there's not an athlete in here, and I say, is that what you were going for? No, you weren't going for that. So I'm telling you, it's really hard, though, because you really have to strengthen those lower erector muscles to get that good arch. You will, if you talk to competitors, you know, that do the bigger shows where you're on stage for a while, they will all tell you, the first couple times they compete, that lower back is killing them in the next morning. You want to arch that lower back, then push back and up on the glutes. Okay? If you're a little wider, if you're a little smaller in the glutes, you want to uh, do a uh, more narrow, and if you're a little bit wider in the glutes, a little bit more of a, a wider straddle. And if you have thinner legs, where Ashley doesn't, but her toes are a little pointed more forward, but and I think India's is too, but you'll see some of the girls with a little thinner legs, what they'll do is they'll point their toes out a little bit, because then it'll make the quads look a little... Because again, this is another thing. This is not just... This is not a butt contest. That's a big part of it. Well, but the problem is, is I have people, they'll email me and they'll send me photos. And they send me the rear photo and they say, I don't understand how this person got wherever it was. And I'm like, well, first of all, I need a front pose. Because... The thing is, it's balance. We're still looking for balance, okay? Because again, when I went back and I showed you all those photos, the different bodies at the in the women's uh, Olympia, if even if you looked at photos this past week, was it just last weekend for Arnold's? I think it was just last weekend for yeah. Arnold's. Um, but if you look, you have Angelica, who's a lot more muscular overall, but her muscles in proportion. It's her. She's her upper body is totally balanced with her. Casey, who 
is very uh, much thinner from a muscle standpoint, but she's in balance. Her upper body is balanced to her lower body. So again, you always want to, you know, to keep, again, like I said, that balance and shape in proportion. Okay, because some girls I see, they work so hard on getting the glutes round and full, and they don't do anything in their upper body, and then they come in and now they're dieted down, and you look really, you look skinny up top. You look skinny, you look thin. Okay, this is another one. Miss Samantha allowed me to use her for here. Okay, I'm gonna pick up my, get my five people here. Just from a physique standpoint, nothing else, Right or left? What is the better physique? Right. You say right? Anybody say left? Yeah. Well, no, I do too. I like the left. Oh, I think this is a much better physique. She was 16th here and won her pro card here. It's bikini. We don't want to see the splits and the quads. We don't want to see the leanness that she displayed here. And that's sometimes the hardest thing that I can get athletes and the general public, you know, the audience to understand, along with my judges, because we are, we're physique, I mean, I take this body any day of the week, but it's not for the division. And that's what you have to remember, because sometimes people walk out, Shanique Grant was, a, a thing. two years ago she did the, the Pittsburgh Pro, and she had the best body by far on the stage that night, and ended up eighth, because she was in figure, and she was way too thick for figure. But her physique was amazing. So again, you have to think of where, because even though we you look at a physique and you go like, oh my god, it just like, you know, somebody that's like a genetic freak, and you go like, oh, that's fine, but you still, we're still judging it in the for the criteria for that division, and you have to remember that. All right. Now we go back to my same type of thing. Again. Look at the different body types first call out at the Olympia. It's the same thing. It's don't worry about who's coming, because I do, I get people ask me all the time, what national show do you think I do? What do you think I have the best chance to get my pro card? You could do it at the junior say you do. Nobody knows who's going to show up, whatever. What you want to do is you take your body to its best thing. And if you want to know like how you compare, when the easiest thing for you to do is pull your photos up from your show, okay? And then go to the NPC website. If you're going to do the Hawaiian show, it's going to be your first show. You pull, what I would do six months before, pull up the whatever class you're going to be in. You're in the B class. Pull up those couple, the top five from the B class bikini, and then the overall bikini, and put their photos, pull them up, and put yours next to it. That's it. it seriously, it gives you a, a, the best idea of where you need to go, the changes you need to make, or maybe you're right where you need to be. I think this was two years ago at the Olympia. Then, better, just a little bit too much, and you can see just a little bit of the striations there. We don't. In figure, we're looking for, obviously, for nice shape, thicker muscles, okay? And if you thought about the bikini girls, you can definitely see that we've gone from a small amount of muscle to a little bit more, okay? Nice separation, no striations. And if you look, neither of them, again, I see this on the regional level all the time, figure girls coming in and they're so dieted down in the back. And it's like, like I said, if we're not asking for it in the Olympia, we're certainly not asking. What these two competitors have in common is nice, full, thick muscle bellies. I will tell you, you get your body with nice, full, thick muscle bellies, you will do well in no matter what division. You have, you have to have the foundation first. Great. Okay. Okay. Julianne and Jennifer. And again, we've had a lot of girls. In the beginning, it was hard because nobody, for some reason, nobody wanted to go from no heels, I mean, from heels to no heels. But if you've been following the sport at all, last year, Jennifer Taylor did not do well at the Olympia the year before because, again, great physique. Nice, but just too hard for figure, a little bit too big. And she switched over to women's physique and had a phenomenal year, year last year. We just had a girl last year at this past Olympia in November, Natalia Coho, was in the last call out at the Olympia. Again, shredded, too hard for figure. Moved up to women's physique, won her first pro show uh, in Southern Cal, I think, and then 
was second at our Arnold's this past weekend. So again, it's just taking your body. And the thing is, you have to ask yourself, okay? Because, you know, I can say to a girl that, you know, if you like muscle and you're young and you want to move up, absolutely. But again, Amanda Latona was one that could put muscle on, but she'd say to me, I can't get any bigger than this, otherwise I'm not going to get my modeling jobs. So you have to go with what feels good for you, where you're going to feel comfortable with. Shoes, okay? Different amount of muscles on everybody. But even in women's physique, if you can see up close enough, there's no striations back there. It, it, seriously, it's the difference when you go from bikini to figure to women's physique. It's just the amount of full muscle belly that go that transitions from one division to the next. And athletes will contact me and say, I was told by Jones that I should have implants that will help me in my career. I will tell you, wrong, wrong, wrong. Okay? I've been, I seriously, I swear, I have been judging, like I said, for over 30 years. I can tell you I have marked a couple handful of athletes down because the implants were either not uh, proportioned for their body, just didn't highlight their body. I have never, I swear to God, I have never marked an athlete down because they didn't have implants. Especially now with the way they make the suits and stuff. They can, you know, they can fill out your, the, the padding in your suit and stuff. You know, if you're going to get them for yourself, absolutely, have at it. I have them love them, but don't let anybody tell you to undergo in life for co competition. So, the feedback that I get from you a lot, the feedback that I get from you a lot from nationals would just be back posing. So, you're saying to arch your bike just slightly, but stay yeah. sure enough. Oh. <laughs> well, no, well, no, 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 because of, do I have any, are there any pro bikini, I mean, anybody that's pro bikini in here? Come on up, I need. Okay, see, this, this has worked out good. Okay, do a 180, face the back wall. This is where I like. And that, I'm serious, it takes a lot of practice. And you're, and you're, yeah, I probably would do my toes out a little bit. Yes. Yeah. You want to balance it. And the thing is, you don't want to push back so hard that you bring these shoulders in. Because then it narrows this part, and again, we're looking this way up. So this is the first thing we see. We see your, your legs, we see your glutes. And if you're bending forward, I'm looking for, this is what I'm looking for bikini. I'm looking for this, okay? The minute you bend forward, you take all this out of, out of, out of that overall silhouette, yeah? The same thing too, I get, call, I get, thank you. Did that, did that help you? Okay, thank you. Set your body. To your, you know, to what you think it, it's its best, you know, its best advantage, okay? But I have girls all the time. They'll move their hair away because somebody told them that we're looking at their back. We're not. I've had this conversation with Mr. Mannion, and I asked him, "Why do I need to see a bikini's back?" And he said, "Well, you don't really." And I said, "My point, okay? So you don't need to move your hair. If you want to, it's fine. But I'm looking for this, and what happens is." Like I said earlier, especially comp uh, competitors just starting out, usually women are really thin up top. So now you're already thin, you lean down a little bit too much, now you move your hair and you are skinny up top, you have nothing in your back, and your glutes are bigger because you've been working to round them and stuff. So again, it's not that I'm docking you because you're thin, I'm just docking you because you're unsymmetrical from your lower to your higher body. I mean, your upper to your, your lower to your upper body. Does that make sense? So if you have long hair, I, and not only that, the people futz with it on stage. Judges don't want to see that. Just they just seriously. Steve always says, keep it simple. I mean, keep it stupid. Keep it simple. Get into the pose and hold it. We don't. I mean, you want to make a nice transition, but I think sometimes we get too involved in the transitions. And we forget about because lots of times when I get emails and it says you know and I always say I for me I don't need athletes just send me photos I just go to the NPC website I'll look at your photos because I'm not going to give you feedback on your photo anyway I'm going to look at the other people in your class what the quality was there and what you looked like under the same light so I have an idea because lights and stage angles of where the photographers were can all play a part in just one photo. I just did this at a judges seminar a couple weeks ago. I had a girl that <laughs> sent me pictures from her husband to her backstage, same day, and a figure. And if I was giving my feedback, I said to her, beautiful V-tape.
paper, but just very small. Good condition, just really small. Then she sent me the stage photo. Okay, you're very thick in the waist, and you're borderline with the muscle. That's exact, and I, I use it now at one of my judges' seminars, when I want to do my judges' seminars, and I always say to judges, you have to be careful, because sometimes, depending on where the angle the photographer was, the lighting on stage, it can all, you know, make a big difference in, 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 in what you're, you know, you're actually seeing. But I always, so I always tell the athletes just to send me, and then I'll go back, you know, and look at the photos. Okay, who's my men's physique? Okay, I'm going to go through this quickly. Okay, we already talked about the shape, not bodybuilding, about the board shorts and posing. And like I said, the posing is, I'm telling you, like I said, because we all say the men's physique has probably got more depth than any of our other divisions right now. Okay, like I said, you can go to the Olympia and you have people that are out of the top 10 that have won regional shows. But this part, sometimes, even for some of the pros, it can make a huge difference. And, you know, when you, as an athlete, I always tell athletes, go back and get, try to get feedback from the judges, okay? Everybody kind of has a different way they do it. For me, I, and I'll do this tomorrow, or, yeah, tomorrow's Saturday, I always stay after the show if I can. Because a lot of the athletes, what's nice about it, with the amount of shows that we're having, athletes will do a couple together. So they might, you might do like two or three shows in a four week period, and then you take a, a block of time off so that you can go back to the drawing board and make any changes that you want to. So the amount, I had over 2,000 emails at the end of last year that I was still working on. There's no way sometimes that I'm, if I, you're doing a show next week or the week after that I'm going to be able to get to the email before you get back on stage. So for me, I'd rather stay afterwards. And if I miss somebody taking a note on, most all of you come up with your photos on your phone anyway, so that you know that I can look at it. Um, but the, the, if the judges tell you that your presentation, there's something off, they're not standing right, please take it to heart. You the, 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 the way you angle your body and stuff makes such a big, you know, such a big difference. Okay. With um, the, but then after a couple months, if you're, uh, if you're judging a physique, when you're doing the quarter turns, besides what you're looking for is that depth from front to back. So, you know, as an organization, we were like, we don't really, should be looking for that much depth in men's physique. So that's why we kind of switched right away after the first couple months from quarter turns to only a front and back. Individuals, comparisons, and finals, okay? And like I said, there's always a, can be a second uh, judge, a second round of judging in the evening if it was close between, between the athletes. Especially, you'll see it more like at the national shows or at the pro shows when it involves an invite to the Olympia or it, it's, you know, it, it involves, uh, you know, the eligibility for a pro card, you know, um, I just, if you, uh, maybe I should, I guess I should ask Mark this first, um, but I always tell athletes, touch base with your district chairman, I always think from an athlete standpoint, sit on a panel and test judge one time, it will give, I'm serious, it will give you a whole different perspective of, of just the, from being an athlete on stage and the angles and, and, and actually down there marking your papers. Because I did a, um, a seminar, an old women's seminar back in January in DC and Jennifer Ronzetti was there and Candace Lewis was there and Francesca was there and they sat on a mock panel. Talk about three people that could not get me a placement for a girl. And this was a mock show. People, I mean, some of the girls had to have, you know, tights on and stuff. But they're like, oh my God, but I don't want to tell her she, well, she's third, she should, I don't want to make her fourth if she really should be, like, oh my, and they were like, oh my God, Sandy, it is really hard. I said, yeah, it is. Because when you're judging, you, you know, as a judge, especially if you've competed in the past, you know how much time, effort that athletes give up to be part of the sport. And you just want it to be right. Okay, when I say this, but just like everything else, he's not the biggest on stage. Okay? It's the quality of the muscle, and you're not going to get a better poser than him. Only because he is the best at giving you an illusion. That's what, I mean, when you're on stage posing, you want to present your body, to, you want the judges to go away, like going, like not seeing any of your faults. Jeremy is the best at that. If you know Steve Weinberger, he makes all that, the men's physique stands straight forward, facing forward. If you can catch Jeremy in a face forward pose with a camera, I'll give you 10. Yeah, they're black back, they're laughing. And right? 
He is the best at it. He does it just enough to get by Steve, because otherwise Steve, you know Steve, he would not let, but he does. He, it's, so it's, it's, but he knows how to angle his body to such a way that it looks the best, he holds the best, it just, and it, like I said, I think it, presentation in men's physique is so important these days, um, just because of the, the quality of the show, that, you know, the, the athletes that are there. Okay, yeah, this, I know this is a little bit hard, but this, if you go to a show, you know how we always like the first call out is like usually five or six, okay, sometimes four. Whenever you go to a show and you're getting eight and ten people, that tells you that the quality is so good, all the judges had you know, passed down who they wanted to see, a lot of those, it was spread out all over because the quality is so good. It's not like a cut and dry show. And as a head judge, we would rather call out a bigger group so that nobody gets lost and then kind of take it down from there. You know, send a couple back, send a couple back, bring a couple more in. But again, different types of bodies, I mean, a big upper body, really taper, a little bit more, uh, you know, symmetrical, just different body types, a little bit thicker in the waist, again, but all, a little thicker, all first call out at the Olympia. Because each one of these athletes, their body is just amazing. Because we're looking at that fullness, the, the symmetry and everything, based on your bone structure and your size. Okay, and this is just to show, I mean, this is what you want to, you want to have nice full muscle bellies, good uh, conditioning, and now I don't think this year, but last year, if I'm not mistaken, Jeremy, Andre, and Ryan, it was, it was uh, Potvin, right? I think there was two points that separated all three of them at the Olympia. Because what as a judge, what we're constantly doing is, and I like I said, if right now, who's like our ideal for bikini is obviously Angelica. She won the Olympia, she won the Arnold. So as a judge, even when I go to a local show, you go in and you go, okay, who up there is is closer to that ideal? Because like at the USA this year, I had a, a, we, they were doing when we were doing women's physique. And this one athlete came out much better quality than everybody else. And a lot of my judges were like, oh my God, Sandy, she's bodybuilding. And I'm like, is she bigger than Julianne Mellon Carney? Well, no, well, then she can't be too big. So sometimes I think what happens sometimes at the local show is you might, you get somebody that walks in that's just got an amazing physique for that level, and then sometimes they get told they're too big or they're too, you know what I mean? And if a judge ever tells you, that you're going to do better at a national show than you're going to do on a local show, please call me. That is the most stupidest statement I've ever heard. To tell somebody, because I had some, I had somebody, a uh, seminar I did a couple months ago, he was told that he's too good for the local stage, he should go to nationals. You can't be. You can't be. That doesn't make sense. So, again, sometimes the body's just so good as a judge, sometimes it's hard. Because, like I said, in our, you know, in our mind we're trying to, you know, and again, if it's really night or day, it's easy. But, you know, you're looking up there and you don't want to go too big, too hard, no matter what division it is. Men's physique is the same way. I don't want to go too big with men's physique. It's not classic physique. But sometimes the bodies up there just kind of overwhelm you because they look so good. So it's really hard sometimes as a judge to try to keep, okay, how does that physique you know, compared to somebody like a Jeremy or an Andre, because obviously that's, you don't want to get much bigger than that. That kind is like the top of, of men's physique. We're all, and again, this is for all the divisions, really. We're always comparing, because lots of times I get athletes that will say to me, you know what, I'm up in front, like, you know, maybe we had four or five athletes out there, and the judge wasn't even looking at me, he was looking off to the side. Well, sometimes when the, 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 the athletes that are in the middle are being compared, maybe a judge already has already you know, place these four or five athletes. So they're looking, because maybe the four that went back, they're still not sure, or they're looking ahead to tell, so they can tell the head judge, I want to see these four in my next call out. Okay, so I say, to, I know I say to, to athletes sometimes, you know, it's it, just because the judge just didn't look when they were, you know, when you look down compared, because lots of times too, lots of us will be writing notes, so like, you're trying to make a little note so that you can remember something when somebody comes at you, and obviously it's kind of like everything else. That's the, that is the second in time when the athlete looks down at you and you kind of, and you're looking down, or you're writing, you know, jotting a note, uh, a note down on your paper. Another thing is too, lots of times athletes will say, because we have, our, we have a whole judges 
code of conduct, okay, that the judges get. Not having a cell phone at the or not using a cell phone at the table, not talking. But I will say to you, you're going to see a little bit more talking at the judges' table only because, as I said earlier, we've gone from like 42 IFBB shows here in the country and internationally to over 118. We're trying to build the infrastructure to, you know, to, to support those number of shows. So lots of times at our panels, like at our nationals, because I make them up, I might have six or seven senior judges, but then I have four or five that are just new to the national level. Now they've already been judging at a regional level and they've test judged at the national, but it's still a big difference when you're test judging and your scores don't really affect anybody but you, as opposed to now when you're part of the panel and you know that your score is going to affect an athlete. So, and then so, you know, I would, you know alternate how they're spaced so that I have a junior ju judge next to two seniors so that if they go, okay, um, why would you go this way and that way with those two athletes? I'm not getting it. So, that, you know, the senior judge would say, well, this is why, you know, whatever the reason is. So I can just kind of, you know, t let an athlete, tell an athlete that. So they give a little bit slacker with this next year because, like I said, we're really trying to beef up and, you know, um, our judging panels with our numbers and stuff. Still be on the line, but just angled in. Because you have to remember, sometimes at the bigger shows, if there's 13 judges or even 11 judges, you have judges, so 11 of these chairs, and if you're way over on that other side, it doesn't hurt you to angle in. And real quick, with bikini, okay, do not put the number down here, okay, because then you do this, okay. I mean, and this is constant. My judges are always, I can't see the numbers. I can't. I've been finding out. I don't, again, I, I think it depends on the connectors and stuff. But if you can put them out a little bit more and practice turning both ways, okay? Because, again, I, I just did a, I did a show a couple weeks ago, and all the, all the bikini girls were like this way. And I said, just angle the opposite way, which just means go like this. I, I'm serious. I, this is what I get. They, they don't, okay? So you have to. You have to be able to, to angle that body from both sides so that the judges can see you from, from both sides of the table. And I didn't say it earlier when I was doing our organizational thing, but remember when I said to the NPC members, you're the foundation? I will tell you, every year we do our national meeting at our nationals in Miami, okay? Today, with the way social media is and emails are, Athletes will write into the national office and say something they like, something they don't like. And I tell a lot of athletes, though, will say to me, like, oh, I went to a show and I didn't like this, or they did this, and is that right, and stuff. And I always say to people, write into the national office. I guarantee you, like I said, if you're not there, we don't have an organization. All your emails are looked at. That's how Classic Physique came about. The national office kept getting all these emails from Men's Physique that said, again, they don't want to be as big as bodybuilders. Generation to generation, we change where we want to be, and but we want to show our legs. So when we do our national meeting, all those emails, especially when there's emails that are similar, like if there's a thread for whatever the issue is, we look at that, we talk about it, and then we vote on it. So that's how Classic Physique came. So seriously, your input is always, always important. Okay, so I didn't put all the different uh, groupings under each, but basically each of the four, whether it's A, B, C, or D, you're bound by not only a height, but you're bound by a weight. And I think this is the weight, I don't think this is my wrong slide, because we went up to 165 this year, I think. Everything was five, and again, it was because of input from athletes. Okay, you said that about coming out to your quarter turns, your mandatories, your front double bicep, your side chest, your back double bicep, your abdominals and thighs, there's no side tricep, and your favorite, this is the part that I think most athletes, most classic physique guys fall down on. It's kind of like an afterthought, okay? You see them, because I, lots of times Steve and I will talk and I'll say to Steve, it doesn't look, no, it's not a good pose for his body. But yet, as an athlete, that's the last pose you do before you walk off stage. You want to leave the, the judges with your best, highlighting whatever your best feature is. Whether your, your thickness, your back, whatever it is, you want to, so your classic physique pose should be something that's going to highlight your body that is just not a classic physique pose. 
Does that, because that, like I said, especially too, like, you know, even with bikini and figure, you know, when you go to the national shows now at Men's Physique, you know, it's like, sometimes the classes are so big, you're in and off, you know, like, somebody's there and they're giving you, like, seven, eight, ten seconds, and then they're, they're moving you off. And I always, I always say to the, the athletes, you want to get your best poses in, you want to get the pose and hold it. You don't want a lot of other fluff. Like with men's physique lately, we're seeing guys, when they're doing their transitions, they're doing kind of half of a lat spread, they're doing bicep poses, and I will tell you, you're wasting time because we're not looking at that, we're waiting for you to hit that pose. I started to say earlier, and I think I went off on a tangent when I, I had, tend to do, is when you send me an email, if I go look at your photos, if I, out of 40 photos, and I can't find a photo of you set that tells me that you're moving too fast up there. You want to, it's better to do less poses and hold them. Because if the photographer can get a good, a good photo off of you, that means the judges can also assess your body. When you move too fast, we don't actually get to see you set in the pose. So it's better to do a, a lot less poses, because really, you should want to get on the stage and off before that person even starts, the next person starts coming out. Because again, like I said earlier, the quality is so good, the longer you're on stage, the more faults I'm going to find. Because that's what judges, as judges, we're looking for. We're looking for your faults. So you want to get on, get off, so that as you're walking off, I'm going, oh, I, oh, I need to see that athlete again. That's what you really want to do. You want to get on and off the stage so that you leave the judges wanting to see more of your physique. And getting back to classic, it's the same thing. When you're doing your routine, don't do the most muscular, the tricep pose. You want to stick with the poses for the division that you're competing in. Okay? Now, again, this is just all tips about, and we all know this, you're going to, even the men's physique, they always say to me when we're doing posing about starting at your feet and working up, lats out. Okay? So, I want to go through this. I want to pull somebody out of the audience here. And again, it just tells you, and these are all things that I pulled off of Steve's video, especially when you're doing your side chest, you really want your arms down low enough and pull the stomach in and really, really expand and lift the chest, especially in classic because you want to bring your waist in and make yourself look as, you know, as V-tapered as you can. This is another one, and now that I've been watching Steve's video and now I'm seeing it all the time on stage, it's a bit doing your abdominals. Start from the floor. You want your elbows out. Why? You don't want because so many times you see the athletes, your elbows are together in front and they're not out wide because what happens is, is you take your lats out of the picture then. So even though, because you, you know, when we're doing your side chest, we're not looking just at chest. We're looking at that quad and your hamstring development. You know, every pose, it's not just that muscle group that the pose is named after. It's we're looking at the whole package. So the same thing with you know, with hands overhead abdominals, we're looking at, we're still looking at that nice, trying to look for that nice V taper, so you want your lats to come out, you want your waist to be small, and you want to see your leg development. Okay, another one. Two totally different body parts, I mean body structures, and again, first and second at Olympia. So again, classic physique is just Nice structure, nice shape, separation, and you don't have to be, again, not as lean as you see in bodybuilding. Same thing here. Two guys who I think this is from Nationals or the Junior Nationals. Again, just nice quads, nice separation. There. Nice lats, just, but again, it's just that nice full muscle bellies with just nice separation. And you can see here, same thing. Again, one leg, and, and the way he poses, you can see, shows the separation in his, in his hamstrings and stuff, shows his calf, okay? But then if you turn your leg out a little bit, it shows your width there. Still, you can see, still see the conditioning. Okay, new, some new changes for this year. To place top two in an open national qualifier, okay? If you qualified in 2017 for 2018, obviously you're qualified, okay? We never go back and hurt an athlete if we change a rule. But again, so it's just top two. 
So if you're going to Junior USA, or you're going to the USA, or you're going to Team U, you're going to be top two in an open national qualifier. Because lots of times, too, I'll get master's athletes, or I'll get um, novice athletes that say, you know, I'm second in my class, but it's only in the open divisions. Okay? If you go to a national show and place top five, you're qualified for the following year. Okay? It's one year, but we don't count the year you qualified in, and it's calendar. So if you, it doesn't matter where in 2017 you qualified, you're good for all of 18. In 18, again, if you qualify in January, you really get two years out of it. You get all of 18 and all of 19. But it goes from January 1st to the 31st, okay? And even if you did a master's national show and you were in the top five, it's a national show, you're still qualified for that following year, okay? This, again, year, okay? If you're a U.S. citizen, it's nine shows. It was the Arnold's Amateur in Columbus, our Junior USA, our Junior Nationals, our, our Universe, which was, used to be called our Team Universe, our Masters Nationals, our USA, North American, Amateur Olympia, and Nationals, our Nationals, all shows that are given away pro cards for U.S. citizens. If you're a resident with a green card, Arnold's Amateur, North American, if you're somewhere in the North, South, Central Americas, and the Amateur Olympia. So right now there's three opportunities for non-citizens uh, to get cards, but again, anybody can go overseas to any of the other countries, and all those schedules are listed on our NPC website. The uh, class of physique guys with the weight increase. Mm -hmm. It's also been a curse for some of us in the weight increase. Have we reached our max for us? Five pounds a year. According to Mr. Mannion, yes, he's done with the class of physique. Yes, adding the weight right now. Yep. But I'll be, I mean, I'll be honest with you. If you know, if 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 he sees, I think last year, lots of times they saw too many guys like really struggling and becoming unhealthy to try to, to you know to make weight. We're also what we're we're trying to do too, especially for the heist. We're trying to make a national da database so that once you get height you don't have to get hyped at any more shows. As a promoter, especially if we're starting with the pros, so that whatever first show you do of the year, that height, that, so that you know nobody's gonna tell you, you know what I mean, that you're, and also too, we all, anybody that promotes classic physique, we had to get a, a, a laser height thing, so that there's not as much discrepancy, you know what I mean, discrepancy, because it can make a big difference if you walk in and all of a sudden you're told you got to lose seven pounds, you know what I mean, to the next day. So yeah, we're trying to get that together. No, you just want something that, that, seriously, that fits your body. She was asking me about suit cuts. Because you want something that fits the angles of your body, okay? Because, again, if you're shorter torso, okay, you don't want to keep hiking it up because it's going to make your legs look really longer. I always get asked about the platform shoes, too. Um, I've always said that I think the platforms distort athletes only because most women are not perfectly balanced. Lengthwise, like their waist doesn't come right in the middle of their height from their upper to lower body. And then, like I said, it's all that angle. It's, it's all that thing is, it's illusions with the angling. Now you get on stage and you have a two inch block under your legs, so now your legs look even longer and your, your torso looks this big. So, like I said, because I get questions all the time, oh, I hear you don't like you know, platform shoes. I love platform shoes. I have platform shoes. Don't like them on stage. That's all, you know what I mean? So, but again, we don't, you know, our rules doesn't, we don't get real rigid with that. So, you, you know, people can wear whatever they want. Um, oh, but the suit, I always tell athletes, if you're going to get a suit, I always say, again, this is general. Uh, you know, we've, I've had people come up with the palest suit and win. But I always tell athletes, you want something, because again, those lights are bright, okay? And even though the, the one venue, one venue to another can differ a little bit. They're still bright. They can wash you out so easily. So I always say you want something that's going to give you good contrast. So whatever color you're going to go with, I always say go with the darker, at least to start with, I would start with the darker color suit. So it gives you more contrast with your skin tone. So that again, it's just something to help you stand out. Because like I said, the quality is so good, you want any kind of edge that's going to get you noticed when you walk up on stage. You look up and think, nobody has any questions. I'm trying to think of all the questions I get asked, like in email, you know what I mean, just general things in, in emails and stuff. Um, here, oh, tattoos. Do not cover them. 
okay? Because you can't cover them that we're not going to see them and that makeup base is too thick for under the lights. Um, because I'm telling you, if, you know, if you've got a really good physique, the tattoos are not going to hurt you anymore. What, where they're going to hurt you is if you have two athletes with the same, I mean, with just really unbelievable physiques, and one's whole back is, you know, is, is, is covered with a tattoo, it could play a part in there if, it, if, I don't, I mean, if I'm not seeing as much depth as I'm seeing in the other athlete because of your tattoos. But for the most part, you hurt yourself more if you cover them up than if you leave them go. Um, are we almost done? Oh, I'm past time. Anyways, I'm going to be around, so if you have any questions or anything about anything, please.